What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to update labels with Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at updating labels. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership that's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, many videos back we looked at sort of grabbing input information from a text box and then doing something with it in the terminal, printing it out in the terminal. In this video, I wanna show you how to update the actual label on the screen. So, you know, it says, hello, John, and uh, that's pretty much it. So this is really easy to do, should only take us a couple of minutes, but this is important. This is something you're gonna to wanna to do all the time, update things on your app. And so uh, that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So I've got a couple of files, one called update underscore label.py and one called update underscore label.kv. And this is just our basic starter code that we've had up until now. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So really quickly, let's just build out this app that we just saw on the last screen. So I'm gonna use a box layout. We're gonna set the orientation to vertical and set it to the size of the, the app itself. And now inside of here, we want a label, right? So we want the text to say what? What's your name? Something like that. And let's give this a font underscore size of like 32 to make it really big. And we also want a text input box, right? And here we want to give this a multi line of false. We just want one line. And let's give this a size underscore hint of like one by 0.5. So the X is one. It'll stretch all the way across the whole width of the thing. But the Y, sort of the height of it, yeah, let's put this at 0.5, make it half as big, so it's a little bit skinnier. Uh, so, okay, we also want a button. And let's do the same thing here. Let's give this a size hint of 1 by 0.5. So our button's not huge. It's sort of half the size we would think. And let's give this a font underscore size also of 32, so the font's nice and big. And let's give this a text of, uh, like, say, submit, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. Now, obviously, we're going to have to make some changes to all of this in order to get inputs and change things. But for now, I just wanna save this and run it to make sure it looks okay. So set over here and Python update underscore label.py. And when we do, we see, okay, we've got this, says what's your name, we've got a text input box, to submit, we can click this, it doesn't do anything yet, but okay, this is generally how I want it to look, right? So, okay, we've got our basic app. Now we need to work on grabbing information from it and updating it. So. To do that, we need to add some IDs to each of these things because we need to be able to reference, for instance, the label and the text input in our Python file because this is where we're gonna be writing sort of logic stuff, actual code, telling the app to do different things. We'll do all that in here and we need to be able to reference the label. For instance, in here, we need to be able to say, hey, update the label. So we need to be able to reference the label. So to do that, we give it an ID. And we've kind of looked at this before. We'll just give this an ID. And this is the label. So I'm going to call this name underscore label because we're asking what's your name, right? So I'm going to call it the name label. The text input box also needs an ID. So I'm just going to call this name underscore input because this is a text input. So I'm going to call it name input. Okay, that's good. And then down here, we need to tell the button to actually do something. So let's say on underscore press. We want to run root dot press. And this is a little function that doesn't exist yet, but we can go ahead and make it right now. So let's go ahead and save this file and head back over here. And inside of our my layout class here, let's create that function. So define press. And inside of here, we want to pass self. Now in here, let's create some variables. Create variables for our widgets, let's call them. Right, so the first one we want is name. So name is the thing we're gonna type, right, in the input box. So that's just gonna be self.ids, right? Because remember, we gave them an ID. So we can reference those IDs just by calling self IDs, right? And now, what did we call this one? We called it name input, right? So we can call name input dot text. What is the text we put in the name input text box or in the text input field, right? And I will just assign this to name. 
So what we could, and we've done this in the past, print this to the screen. So if we just save this and run it, I could type in here, John, I can hit this, nothing happens. But when I close the app down here, it's printed out John to the terminal, right? So we know that this is successful. We've actually put whatever we put in the input box, we've assigned it to this name variable. Now the only thing to do is update the label. And we could do the same thing to reference the label. We can call self dot IDS dot whatever we called this label, we called it name label, right? And then we could call the dot text of that label and we can set it to anything we want. Let's set it to just name for now. So go ahead and save this. Let's run this guy. Pull this over here. What's your name? John Elder. Boom. It says John Elder there. And it's just that easy. We've now updated that label. Now we can get fancy with this if you want. And for instance, use an F string or something, right? So let's put this in an F string. We can wrap this in curly brackets. And now we can say hello. And I put an exclamation point. I want to get really, really fancy, right? <laughs> Fun with Python. Most basic Python ever. So what's your name? John, submit. Hello, John. And it's just that easy. Now we still got John sitting here. So maybe, maybe we also want to clear this at the same time we update the label. So we can do that. Let's clear input box. And to do that, we can just set this right to nothing, right? So go ahead and save this. Let's run this one more time. What's your name? John Elder. Hello, John Elder. And you notice this is not clear. We can type in something else. Go to me.com. Hello, go to me.com. And we're good to go. Type in gibberish. Hello, gibberish. And our box is cleared. So really, really easy uh, to update labels and things like that from your Python file. Just remember, we got to set an ID for everything, right? Give every ID, everything you want to update or reference an ID make it unique, right? On press, we want to run root.press, right? Maybe we'll talk more about on press in future videos, on press, on release, on, on drag, things like that. But uh, we're just pressing the button, basically. When we're doing that, we're running root.press, and root is, you know, our root widget, our root class here, right? My layout. Inside of here, we just create a little function or method or whatever you want to call that and just do what we want to do. We set a variable to name. Now we don't have to set a variable like here. We could have just grabbed this whole thing and pasted that right here. Same thing, but you know, it's a little sloppy. So we want to assign it to a variable. We might as well. And so that's how you do that. And then to clear it, we just self.ids.name.input text, set it equal to just nothing and we're good to go. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.